What's up, everybody? Mr. Forrest back with another episode of E3. Why wait? Let's jump right into it. Ed was afraid of a lot of things. Ed was afraid of being alone in his room in the dark at night. Ed was afraid of toenail clippings. Ed was afraid of cough syrup. Ed was afraid of country music. And rightfully so. Ed was afraid of an Irish tap dancing giraffe that he believed lived underneath his bed. In fact, Ed made a list of 8,479 things he was afraid of, which coincidentally is the number of stars that are visible from the earth, which frightened Ed because he was afraid of coincidences and lists. Ed had a recurring nightmare. You know the kind of nightmare that you have over and over again. And in his nightmare, there was an Irish tap dancing giraffe that lived under his bed that tried to chew his toenails. The thought of something that tall with wobbly, awkward knees, dancing underneath a purple disco ball to an awkward song called Cold Feats, made the hair on the back of Ed's neck stand up, sort of like when Kamala Yeager would run her unusually long fingernails for a fifth grader across the chalkboard in class. It truly was frightening. Ed thought of those unnaturally long eyelashes. He thought of that spaghetti hair, those giant teeth, and those Flintstone diapers. It really was a nightmare. Each night, on his way to bed, Ed was so scared that the giraffe was going to get his toenails, and you know how much Ed freaked out about toenail clippings, that he would take a running start and he would dive from about six feet away, head first, into bed, keeping his feet as high as he possibly could. And then he was always terrified about having to go to the bathroom at night. Many nights he pondered just staying and wetting the bed. But when he would get up to go to the bathroom, he would jump from his bed, making it as far as he could, running as fast as he could to the bathroom without looking back, slam the door, lock the door, then turn the light on. His parents always wondered what that that banging was upstairs in the middle of the night. Ed was afraid of bullies. There were bullies at school who picked on him. They were super mean to him. They would call him mean names and say mean things to him, but they would do mean things to him too. Like one time one of the bullies taped a sign to his back that said, flick my ears. And all day long, people were flicking Ed's ears until they were red and raw. And what made it worse, Ed was afraid of having his ears flicked. It was number 77 on his list of things he was afraid of. Luckily, the sign finally fell off his back, which is a good thing because Ed was also afraid of having things taped to his person. Number 342. One of the bullies one time stepped on his sandwich completely ruining his lunch. One of the bullies stole his markers. One time one of the bullies shoved him into a locker and locked the door and he was in there until the janitor found him much later that night. One of the bullies during class chopped a piece of his hair off, a big clump of it, and Ed didn't even know it was gone until he got home and his mom asked him what happened to his hair. Ed was afraid of these bullies. Every day on the way to school he would worry about it and he wasn't sure what to do. Ed was worried about dying. It was one of those things that Ed always freaked out about. It was one of those things that he would stay up late and he would always think about. Ed was worried about his church family. His church family was going through a really rough patch. People in the church seemed angry about everything. They seemed angry about money. They seemed angry about masks. They seemed angry about little nitpicky things. Some people thought the pastor preached too long. Some people thought the pastor didn't preach long enough. Some people didn't like the color on the walls. But because their church was struggling so much financially, the pastor was thinking about going halftime at the church and then to alleviate some of the financial pressure, he was going to go get a job somewhere else. But Ed thought to himself, that will give him less time to study to preach. That will give him less time to pray, less time to visit people and counsel people who need counseling, and maybe that would make the church even more upset and even more people would leave. Ed was worried about it. And Ed was worried about his sin. Ed had quite the temper and tended to blow up a lot. And Ed really did love his sister. He, he really did deep down inside, but she annoyed him in ways that he didn't even know it was possible to be annoyed. 
Uh, Mary was older than Ed, and Ed always wanted a real family, and now that he had a real family, he was so excited to actually have a sister, and he wanted to do things with her, but all it seemed like she cared about were boys, and her hair, and her makeup, and her friends, and she wouldn't go roller skating with Ed, she wouldn't go out to sushi with Ed, she wouldn't play basketball or Legos with Ed, and any time he'd ask her to, she'd always either ignore him or say, I'm not a child, Ed, and it would make him so angry he would rage and he would yell really mean and really hurtful things at his sister. And he knew it was wrong and later he would feel bad and he would apologize to God for it, but he knew he'd do it again and he was always worried he'd lose his temper and that he would sin again. Ed was worried about so many things. He was scared of so many things and that night he did not sleep well at all because all he thought about while he was awake and in his dreams were things that were scary and things that caused him to worry. He woke up the next morning not feeling rested at all. And his first thought was to get up and get a cup of tea, maybe with just a little bit of caffeine in it, to help him wake up for the day and sit on the porch and read his Bible. But he looked over the edge of his bed and he decided he was going to read his Bible from his bed today. And Ed was reading in Ephesians 1, and he read Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. Check it out. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places? Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here's what's going on in this passage. Paul is praying that the saints in Ephesus would know the power, the supremacy, the authority of Jesus Christ so that they would not worry and they would not be afraid. And Paul gives three examples of the power of God in this passage. Let's talk about them. The first one is this. He showed his power when he raised Jesus from the dead. Look at verse 20. That he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Raising Jesus from the dead was perhaps the greatest example of power this world has ever seen. You see, death is a respecter of no one. Everyone is a sinner, and because we're sinners, we die. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. It's what we've earned. It's what we deserve. And because we're sinners, we're going to die. And death doesn't skip over anyone. It doesn't pass over anyone. Death is cruel and death gets everyone. However, God showed his incredible power when he raised Jesus from the dead. You see, Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins, all of our sins. And then, three days later, he rose again from the dead, defeating death and showing his power. Ed was blown away. You see, Ed had just learned recently that defibrillators don't do what they do on TV. Now, on TV, when somebody flatlines or somebody dies, they take these two paddles and rub them together and then put them on the person's chest and yell, clear, and then bump, bump, send like a charge of electricity through the person, their body convulses, and their heart starts beating again. It brings them back to life. But Ed recently learned that's not how a defibrillator works. You see, once somebody is biblically dead, there is nothing. There's no treatment. There's no paddles. There's no pill. There's no medicine. There are no magical spells or magic words you can say to bring somebody back from the dead. And Jesus was dead. His heart stopped beating. His blood stopped pumping. His brain activity ceased. His lungs were not breathing air. He was dead for days. And then God raised him from the dead, showing his power. So, 
God showed his power when he raised Jesus from the dead. And he showed his powers when he seated Jesus in the heavenly places over principalities, powers, might, and dominion. Look at verse 21. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. This list of principalities, powers, might, and dominion, this list is representative of the forces of darkness, angels, demons, Satan himself, evil spirits. Jesus has power and authority over all of them. God seated Jesus over all of them. Remember in Paul's time, the people in Ephesus feared demonic forces. They feared the powers of evil. That's why they practiced magic and had magic words and they had magic charms and they had magic spells and they worshiped Diana because they longed for protection from the evil forces. And Paul is reminding those believers in Ephesus, many of those used to practice those magical arts. Guys, you don't have to go back to that. Guys, you don't have to be afraid of that. Guys, the stars do not control controlled your fate. They're just big balls of gas in space. Jesus controls your destiny. Jesus is all powerful over the forces of darkness. You don't have to be superstitious. You don't have to be worried and you don't have to be afraid because not only is Jesus uh, supreme over the forces of darkness, but the text says over every single name that was named in the past, in the present, and in the future. You don't have to be afraid of people either. So, God showed his power when he raised Jesus from the dead. God showed his power when he seated Jesus above principalities, powers, might, dominion, and every name that's ever been named. And God showed his power when he placed all things under Jesus' feet and made him head over the church. Look what the Bible says in verse 22. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. The analogy here is of a king in battle. See, in Old Testament times when a king would conquer his enemies, he would put his foot over his enemy's neck, signifying absolute victory for him, absolute defeat for his enemy, and the ability to squash and destroy his enemy any moment he chose. We saw this in Joshua 10 when Joshua had his commanders put their feet over the five Amorites right king's necks. We saw this in 2 Samuel 22 when God defeated David's enemies and he sang a song about putting his feet on their necks. This is a position of victory, a position of authority, a position of dominance, and God didn't just put Jesus, his enemies under his feet. He put all things under his feet. Jesus is ruler. He's sovereign over all things, and then God made him the head of the church. You see, Ed was nervous about things in his church, but Ed had to remember, God loves the church far more than Ed ever could. God was concerned with the well-being of the church far more than Ed could ever be. Jesus has got this. Ed had one of those aha, mind-blown moments as he read the text because the point of this text is this. God is so powerful, so in control of everything, He demonstrated it in many ways, but Paul gave three examples. So that believers don't have to worry, and believers do not have to be afraid. You see, Ed doesn't have to be afraid of forces of darkness, and he doesn't have to be superstitious like he used to be. He doesn't have to pray to the saints. He doesn't have to consult a Ouija board. He doesn't have to have a lucky rabbit's foot. He doesn't have to be afraid of the dark at night. In his mind, he knew there was no Irish tap dancing giraffe, but his imagination would get running. He just had to remind himself that Jesus is all powerful and Jesus has got this, so he doesn't have to be afraid. Ed didn't have to worry about the bullies at school. Ed didn't have to worry about his church situation. He didn't have to worry about his problem with sin. Jesus is in control of all of this. That's the first thing he needed to know and the first thing he needed to remember in order to remove the fear, in order to remove the worry. Ed took out his list of 8,479 things he was afraid of and he clicked his favorite pen And he began crossing that list off, one at a time. Each time he crossed something off, he would say the words, Jesus is more powerful than, Jesus is supreme over, Jesus has authority over. And suddenly those things he was afraid of didn't seem so scary anymore. 
Ed closed his notebook and filled with faith in the one who is supremely powerful, Ed lowered his feet over the side of his bed and stood up without fear. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of E3. Question for you, what are you afraid of? And what do you worry about? Let's face it, we all worry about stuff, right? We're all afraid of something, right? Here's what we need to do. We need to remind ourselves of the truth. Constantly, our sinful hearts pull us away from the truth. We need to remind ourselves of the truth. And the truth in Ephesians 1 is this. God is all powerful. There are no limits to his power. He is so powerful. The thing you're worried about, the thing you're fearful of, those are nothing compared to God's power. So take a deep breath. Trust the one who loves you and is supremely powerful over whatever it is you're worried about or whatever it is you're scared of. This week's take home paper looks like this. Don't forget to touch and say each word of your memory verse every day. Don't forget to do your Bible reading one chapter a day. And here's your memory verse, Ephesians 1:19. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might. I'll have a link to the take home paper down in the description below. I'll also have my email address down in the description below. If you complete your take home paperwork, make sure you have your parents email me. You complete this one here and I'm sending you a prize. So make sure you stay up with that. Guys, leave a like on the video. Make sure that you're subscribed. Say hi to me in the comments and I will see you guys next time. But until then, Mr. Forrest, out.